I have to admit this morning when I open up the uh, blinds, uh, so I had to have a little tear in my eye. Good to be back. There it is. A little foggy, but it's there. There. Yeah. Wow. This is the pier where th there was a tidal gauge. I, I had to check the tidal gauge to make sure it was doing what it was supposed to do. That, that was our, one of our contributions. Back in uh, 1948, I had the opportunity to come to Attu. Two months before I got here, I was aboard the USS Mount McKinley uh, in support of Operation Sandstone, which was a three atomic bomb test. Well, it just so happened that we were on the staff of that operation and the senior officers there decided, hey, let's help out these kids. And they gave us an option to go ahead and select where we wanted to go next. Well, uh, I was really interested in weather. I volunteered to go to Attu, Alaska. And uh, I've had people say, well, why did you do that? Well, like Willie Horton. When Willie Horton was a bank robber up there in New England, uh, he was asked, why, Willie, do you rob banks? He says, because that's where the money is. Well, in my case, I thought, gee whiz, had to. That's where all the weather is. And sure enough, I have not been shortchanged. <laughs> but it was, it was very good. Particularly, I think the uh, most interesting part was where I could see how the weather changed, cold fronts come in. We did have one typhoon pass through where we had uh, winds up to 75 miles per hour, sustained 75 miles per hour. Uh, what really was a big problem with that when we got the strong winds with that typhoon was that our little storeroom where we stored all our consumables, can I say toilet paper, <laughs> uh, got blown out, uh, just blasted right out of the uh, uh, the warehouses, and like, it looked as though a bunch of high school kids had papered ice, uh, the island here with toilet paper. The troops weren't too happy about that, <laughs> but uh, hey, we survived. That was absolutely stunning. I had never been in anywhere in the world where there was no sound. No sounds whatsoever. And after a while, it was so peaceful that it, it, it kind of got into your system that, you know, this is, this is the way it's supposed to be. We don't need all this clatter and clutter and stuff. We would come out to places just exactly like the surroundings here, and this is where we do our firing practice. Uh, then I could hop right up. Now, today, I probably need a little help getting up. <laughs> but when, when you're 91, that's, hey, that's the price you pay. But what is the alternative? And here I am. I'm very happy about that.